Hi, I'm Lars Danner, an Anchorage-based adventure cyclist. This video is about building fat bike wheels. So, what will you need? Well, the parts you'll need is a rim. Uh, this is a Tundra rim. Uh, you'll need to know the effective rim diameter, which is the distance from where the spokes are supposed to stick out on one side of the rim to the opposite side of the rim. That information will be available from the rim manufacturer. It's ERD, or effective rim diameter. In the case of this Tundra rim, it's 540 millimeters. Remember that number, it will come in handy. Uh, you'll need a hub, that's the center portion of the wheel. You'll need properly sized spokes, uh, in this case 32 of them, that's almost always going to be the case. You will need uh, spoke uh, nipples, uh, 32 of them as well. I recommend brass nipples. Uh, in terms of tools and other supplies, since this is a fat bike project, I always recommend having some low temperature grease handy. And, of course, you'll need a spoke wrench. And that's really about it. Maybe some rags. Okay, so let's get started. Now, a few minutes ago, I talked about the effective rim diameter, 542 millimeters. Well, by just looking at it, you know that the spokes are going to go roughly uh, half that distance. They're going to go from the rim to the hub. And so, uh, how do you size the spokes? How do you know what size spokes to order? Well, it turns out that the hub is going to take up a little bit of space. Uh, also, uh, there's going to be a little bit of an angle uh, to each of the uh, spokes. So there's a lot of factors and there are some online calculators you can use. Uh, but having done this a number of times uh, and checked my calculations dozens of times, I can offer you the following simplified formula which will get me into trouble with every wheel, professional wheel builder in the world. But here it is. Uh, take the ERD, which in this case is 540 millimeters, divide it by 2, that gets you 270 millimeters, and subtract 9 millimeters, that gets you 261 millimeters. That formula, the ERD divided by 2 minus 9, yields almost always the correct length of spoke. In that case, in this case, 261 millimeter spokes. All right. So now that we've got the right uh, size spokes, we're ready to go. Okay. All right, so the first step is pro spoke preparation. All right, um, if the spokes are properly tensioned when this process is all said and done, uh, you don't need to use anything to um, uh, uh, lock the spokes in place. In fact, uh, it turns out that if you use um, something to lock them on place and you later have to rebuild the wheel or adjust the wheel, uh, it can be very difficult to remove the spokes. Uh, and in fact, you know, my preference is just the opposite, which is to use a little bit of grease on the spoke threads. So what I do is I take a little bit of this uh, low temperature grease, take about 10 spokes, rub just a little bit across, just a little bit, not very much at all, uh, with my fingers working into both sides. Wipe off the excess with a paper towel. Okay, and that'll prevent the uh, threads from seizing up and it'll allow you to get nice even tension. Okay. Okay, now we're ready to lace. We're going to start off with the pull spokes on the drive side first. Okay, so drive side, uh, you're going to place uh, the drive side to your right, just like you were driving the wheel, and you're going to place the uh, rims. Uh, air valve hole right here pointing straight up. You're going to place the logo on the hub pointing straight up towards the um, valve stem hole. You're going to take a spoke from the inside out, from the inside of the hub out at 90 degrees, at 90 degrees in a drive direction from the logo. Okay. You're then going to place the spoke in the hole that is, that is, that is in a drive direction on the right-hand side uh, in the next position from the uh, valve stem hole. Insert the nipple, give it one or two rotations, and then move on to the next spoke. The next spoke is going to be exactly the same as the first one. It's going to come from the inside from the inside of the hub out you're going to skip one hole on the hub 
If your rim has 64 holes like this one does, you're going to skip three holes on the rim, again on the right side. If it only has 32 holes, you're going to skip one rim, uh, I'm sorry, one hole on the rim. You're then going to place your nipple uh, on the spoke, give it a few rotations, okay? At this point, at this point, take a look here, I've got two, I've got two, um, spokes placed in the wheel. If I point the um, hub so that the logo is pointing straight towards the valve stem hole, uh, you'll see these look like pull spokes. These are the spokes that are pulled on when you move in a driving direction. Okay, We're going to do that. Uh, we've done it with two. We're going to do it with all eight that go on this side. So it's going to be every fourth hole on the rim every other hole on the hub. If you have uh, only 32 spoke holes on the rim, then it would be every other hole on the rim. Okay, now we've got uh, the eight uh, drive side pull uh, spokes installed. Now we're going to install the eight drive side push spokes. Okay, so first we're going to rotate the hub in the direction of travel, okay, like that. All right, now these are then pull spokes, because if you were to rotate the hub in that direction, you'd be pulling on them, the normal drive direction. Okay, now all these, hub, all these spokes came from the inside of the hub flange out uh, to the appropriate hole, uh, and then they're spaced uh, essentially every other or every fourth, depending on uh, how many um, how many holes you have. If it's a 64 spoke hole rim, you're going to skip three holes uh, between each of the uh, drive side pull spokes. If it's 32, you're going to skip one hole between each spoke. Okay, now what we're going to do is instead of coming from the inside out, we're going to go from the outside in, pick any of the empty spoke holes, there will be eight remaining spoke holes on the flange, place the uh, spoke through the hub flange. Now, this is a standard lacing, a standard lacing for almost any type of a bicycle wheel is going to be called three cross, and you're going to go under two spokes, under this one and under this one, and then over a third, and then place the uh, spoke, the first pull spoke, uh, roughly in the middle uh, of two existing spokes. It'll be very apparent where that spoke goes. It'll really only be one spot where it can fit. Uh, you'll want everything to be nice and even. Uh, it'll go between exactly in the middle of two existing spokes. Again, you'll give it a few rotations. Okay, let's try that again. Uh, we can move uh, to the next adjacent hole. Again, come from the outside in, leaving the hub on the outside of the flange. Go under two existing spokes and over the third. Place the spoke hole, spoke in the middle hole between two existing spokes. And Give it a few turns. We'll do that one more time. Again, uh, select an available, preferably the next spoke hole, an available hole. Go under two existing spokes and over one. Place the uh, spoke in the middle of two existing spokes. Put the nipple on. And give it a few turns with your with your finger. There we go. Okay. Okay. Now we've got all of the uh, drive side spokes done. Push and pull. Now we're going to just rotate the wheel around uh, so that the non drive side is accessible. Uh, just like we did before, we're going to point the valve stem hole uh, straight up into the air. Okay. We're going to find the spoke, uh, the pull spoke, pull spoke that is uh, closest to the uh, valve stem hole in a drive direction. We'll call that 
the drive side key spoke. Now we've got to figure out where to put the non-drive side key spoke. Okay, now if you have a 64 hole rim, uh, you're not going to place the spokes uh, parallel to each other. You're going to offset them. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to find the offset spoke that is closest to the uh, 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 key to the key uh, to the drive side key spoke, and that's where you'll place your non-drive side key spoke. It's the one that's closest to both the uh, drive side key spoke and the valve stem. It might be between them. It might be on the far side. If it's on the far side of the uh, drive side key spoke, then the corresponding hole will be one notch past uh, the drive side uh, placement of the um, uh, uh, drive side key spoke. So uh, we can verify where that is uh, by placing a spoke through the hole. Okay, this is one notch uh, contra drive, so we'll move it one more notch down, and that is one notch drive side. Okay, but again, we're going to put the uh, spokes, the pull spokes on the non-drive side from the outside in, just like we did before. So, there we go. Outside. I'm sorry, inside out. <laughs> uh, and there you go. There is your first uh, non-drive side pull spoke. Your non-drive side key spoke. Give it a few turns, and we're going to follow the same simple pattern we did last time. This is pretty easy. Uh, again, inside out. Every other hole. Uh, every other hole on the flange, and uh, every other or every fourth hole on the rim. Okay, now that we've got all of the non-drive side pull spokes done. Uh, it's time to put in the uh, non-drive side push spokes. Okay, now before we came from the inside of the hub out, now we're going to come from the outside of the hub in. Just pick any uh, open hole on the flange. Uh, go uh, through the available space. You want to make it uh, a spot on the far side that's got a lot of gaps. Uh, a lot of gaps between the spokes. Uh, feed the spoke through there. You're going to go under two spokes, over one, and uh, you're going to put it really in the only spot where it'll fit, uh, based on the length uh, and location. And uh, you've got, at this point, eight spokes, uh, seven spokes left to do. Okay, now you've got all of the uh, spokes laced on the uh, drive and non-drive side. Uh, now you've got four things left you need to do. You need to tension the wheel. You need to stress relieve the wheel. You need to true the wheel. And you need to dish the wheel. Okay, let's talk about these one by one. Uh, tightening the wheel, you'll begin initially by doing that with your spoke wrench. You'll tighten each spoke until you have, say, three or four um, threads uh, visible uh, on the end of the uh, spoke uh, before the nipple. You do that all the way around on both sides. Uh, it'll then start to feel a little bit snug. Uh, it'll, you'll feel the spoke starting to tighten up. Uh, as you do this, as you do the tightening process, you'll grab adjacent spokes and you'll squeeze them. Uh, squeeze them quite hard. Uh, the, 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 the tighter the spokes get, the, the more firmly you'll squeeze them. This is known as stress relieving the wheel. It helps the, um, it helps the spokes seat properly. Uh, and it prevents any popping when you first ride the wheel. Okay, once you've got it initially starting to feel uh, tense, you can go check another bicycle wheel you have to see what sort of tension you're looking at. Uh, once you've got it to feel reasonably tense, uh, you'll place the bicycle uh, wheel, it is now a wheel, uh, into your frame, uh, and you'll, you'll rotate it. You'll rotate it in the frame, uh, and you'll be able to see it wobbling side to side. It won't be perfectly through. Okay, so what you'll do is uh, you can place a, uh, any sort of a metal object on the frame, holding it steady, uh, and, and use that as a gauge to tell how much wobble there is in the wheel. Uh, you'll find spots where it wobbles this way and spots where it wobbles that way. If it's wobbling uh, a little bit, if you have a high spot on uh, the non-drive side, what you'll do is you will uh, 
loosen the spokes just a bit, a few of the spokes next to the high spot on the, on the uh, non-drive side, and you'll tighten by a corresponding amount a few of the spokes on the drive side. We continue this process until the wheel is nice and true. Once it's nice and true, uh, it'll still be a little bit off-center. Well, you can uh, visually uh, tell how off-center it is. Uh, you can also use a, a ruler to, to measure it. Um, this is a fat bike wheel. It doesn't need to be precisely centered. If you can get it within a, a few millimeters, which you should be able to by your eye, you'll be just fine. Okay, uh, to center it, if it uh, needs to come to the left, you'll obviously uh, loosen uh, one, or, one or two eighths of a turn um, all the nipples on the right side and tighten one or two eighths of a turn all the nipples on the left side. You continue this process until it's centered. Uh, again, stress relieving uh, the whole time. Uh, then you'll uh, take the, the wheel off, install the uh, rim strip uh, and, the, um, and the tire, air it up nice and good. Uh, put the wheel back on, stress relieve it some more, make sure all the spokes are nice and tight. Uh, take it for a ride. Uh, after about uh, a five or 10 mile ride, uh, flip the bike back upside down, spin the wheel again, uh, see if it's still centered and true, uh, and if everything is still tense, uh, if it's not, uh, repeat the process again, uh, truing it first, then centering it. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video, uh, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave uh, questions in the comment section. Thank you very much.